On to FFA again, I guess. Wait, what the hell? Is that... And apparently there's a player list bug that I thought I'd fixed that apparently is not fixed. Hang on a sec. Alright, now I can show you the game. So this is the FFA first game in the FFA tournament. The bug being that the team display shows up for some reason in the resource display. That shouldn't happen in FFA. Not with one player per team. I thought I fixed that. Right, so this is Altered Arctic. This is also very, very, very bright. A bit too dark. There we go, that's better. Should see some detail on the map. Alright, so this map is one I'm actually not very familiar with at all, since I don't play FFA much. Sorry about that. But it looks like... Well, kind of what I would expect. Islands. Lots and lots of islands. I'm a little curious, how much... Okay, so this area doesn't have much terrain variance once you get underwater. Oh yeah, it's all shallow water, actually. Or almost all shallow water. The sides are deeper, but everything pretty much inside is all shallow water. And it looks like everyone's gone for Anthem as well. Oh, except Honu and Yogg stuff. Hovercraft and gunships... Oh, where's Yogg? Gunships, respectively. Well, let's see if I can figure out what's going on here. So yeah, FFA is a little bit wonky because there are no teams. Or at least, it's 1v1v1v1, 1v1, 1v1, so yeah, no teams. And... This is... I'm guessing Yogstoth's gonna win. I mean, kind of from LO values. And also, going for gunships in this situation, I mean, Yogstoth's already taking the center. They are already gonna be able to easily take the north and pretty much everything else. The cranes, like the early cranes off the gunship plant, those are great ideas. Honu might be able to get in with some nice shots around with critical mass daggers, but I think Ampha's gonna have an easier time just dealing with... dealing with multiple threats and multiple sides rather than hitting all these different sides. Now on the other hand, Rav-8 is... Well, rav is basically pretty heavily already setting up on Honu's front. But Honu... How many do they have? They have three so far. It takes, I believe, four. Yeah, it takes four daggers to kill a duck in one shot. Although, of course, with larger numbers of ducks, it's obviously larger numbers required of daggers. Yogg'Soth, I still think, has a major advantage. The crane, like I said, building up this area very rapidly. These deep water mechs... How deep are they? Oh, not very deep. Ah! They aren't very deep at all. They're... Yeah, you can see them pretty clearly underwater. This is a very shallow water map. I'm almost surprised that we see the amphib use... I mean, the gunship makes sense in terms of, in terms of speed, in terms of easily getting around, but I think that pretty much anything you'll be able to get around quickly enough in this map... Well, Yogg'Soth way ahead in terms of economy. How will that pan out, though? I don't know. FFA is as much politics as it is actual player skill. And if everyone gangs up on Yogg'Soth, well, then it's a three-on-one, and it might be really hard for Yogg'Soth to do anything. Although, we'll see. Yogg'Soth isn't really making any enemies at the moment. Honu and... Honu and Rav-8 just setting themselves up to make sure that neither one does anything, keeping each other honest. Honu, however, is invading Parzival. Parzival is prepared for this. They do have a couple of scallops, but they don't actually have much. Now, at this point... At this point, we have, in the center, like you said, Yogg'Soth has just taken this. So, Yogg will have an economic advantage the entire game. Honu is the only other one I think might be a bit of a threat, but like I said, Honu, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to deal with multiple sides. Just from playing Hovercraft? I don't know, that seems unlikely. Now, Parzival, on the other hand, I really don't know what they have going for them. Not much, honestly. They have, like I said, scallops, but a few boys, and that'll be done. Now, if... I mean, if Hono attacks right now, I think Rav-8... Oh no, rav has got more backup. Never mind, rav fine. I was gonna say, rav might actually have a hard time dealing with it, but no, no, rav will be fine. Ravid's actually in a pretty healthy spot right now, and invading Parzival along the back side, just going underwater. Using them ducks. I think Parzival's gonna be probably the first to go right now. Just because, well, how else is that gonna go, really? Think about it. What else? At this point, Parzival's not gonna have much to work with. Yogstot switching over to Amphib. 
Yeah, they're full-on switching, not even adding. Looks like the gunship factor was entirely for cranes. Yogstoth figured they wouldn't be attacked early on, and... Well, okay, they built defenses, so they figured they might be attacked early on, but they didn't build any military units in the gunship factory. Going straight for Amphib. So now it's basically Amphib for everybody. And Scallops here. Now, this is where Rav could actually come in and deal a bit of damage, although I think the Scallops... They realize that the Scallops are out of position. That would be very useful. But I don't know if they do, and I don't know if they're going to take advantage of that, because it would be a very risky move. It would be a damaging move, but a risky one. And honestly, I think Parzival is not worth dealing with at this point. Parzival is hardly any economy, especially compared to Rav and Honu. Parzival does not have much in the way of economy. All Rav needs to do is make sure Parzival doesn't try to sneak up behind them while trying to take out Honu. Honu is the biggest threat for Rav 8 right now. I mean, obviously Yogstoth is kind of a universal threat. And if some communication could be made that, hey, maybe we should deal with Yogstoth because Yogstoth is... Well, actually, they don't know he's huge. That's the thing, they actually don't know... Because let's just go over. So Yachtoth right now, they have radar coverage of basically everything in the center. They know if something's about to attack them, but they don't have much knowledge of what's going on in anybody's base. Only they know that this island has been taken, and this island has not. Honu! Honu knows... Wait, what the hell? I, there we go. Honu knows about... A little, a little bit less. They basically know nothing of what's going on. They don't really know about the center either, surprisingly. So Honu is basically in the dark. Parzival is also completely in the dark. Even more so, they don't even have radar up. They are just totally in the dark. And Rav8 has knowledge of Honu. Knowledge that Honu is around here. They have a decent army set up, but not much beyond that. They obviously know what Parzival has set up a little bit. But yeah, Rav8 at this point has the most information out of anybody. So nobody knows. Nobody, not one person, knows how ahead Yogstoth is right now. The only person who does is Yogstoth and me. And Scallop Drop coming in here, so the question is who's the main target? And Honu is the obvious target. If Yogstoth goes for anybody but Honu, I'm going to be very surprised. Because if they take out Honu, then all they have to do is take out Parzival and Rav8 in opposite order. That shouldn't be a problem. And already we have a bit of a fight coming in here. It looks like Honu just trying to protect their territory, not trying to invade right now. Rav8 is trying to invade a little bit, trying to just poke out, figure out what Honu has. Realizing very quickly Honu has way too much, while at this point Parzival trying to come in and actually able to deal with some damage. Not much is here to deal with these ducks. This Geoplant's... is it dead? No, not quite. These ducks will be forced back by the Stinger. But still, that's... Oh, just out of range. Ouch. Still not enough. That duck will die. But still, Parzival being fairly aggressive against Honu. And Yogg'sdoth, where are they going to come in with this drop? This drop is pretty big. Like, done right, it could kill somebody. And no, Rav 8's coming in for a bit of extra defense. So yeah, Parzival not able to do too much. But Rav 8 now is out of position. Honu could come in right now and rip this up. Yeah, well, sort of rip this apart. Damage it, not rip it apart quite yet. But where are these going to? These scallops, these scallops and these Valkyries. Actually, how many are there of each? There's 11. Yeah, one, one of each. So they could definitely do, I guess they're looking for a dozen or so. Maybe more. I'm not sure when Yogg'sdoth's going to do this drop. My, I'm... Just waiting with bated breath. Breath. I really don't know when that's going to happen. Because I can't see the future. The Honu coming in here with the error factory. This is going to be a bit of a problem. Now the drop will be able to get in. We'll be able to drop down and deal some damage. And it looks like in terms of static defense in the main base, there are defenders, but there are a few open spots. Now, there are a few spots that very little damage will be taken, and a few spots where there's just completely nothing. Now, Yogg'sdoth, from the looks of it, their best bet will be to go through the center and out. Although, on the other hand, there is a razor right here. That Actually, that'll be a problem. So, yeah, never mind. What they'll want to do is go along the north side. As you can see, along the north side, most of that is, like, this area here. That's open. And they can go down from here, and that will be perfect. That'll avoid all the defenses. That'll avoid losing any of these transports. And here we go! Here we go! It's starting! Where is it going to? What are you attacking, Yogg'sdoth? Are you attacking Honu? The answer better be yes, because if it's not yes, I don't know what's wrong with you. But it looks like they're going north, probably going to go east from here, and then... Only two decoy Valkyries, interesting. There we go, there it is. Come on, follow up, follow up. Although it looks like at the same time, Honu is actually attacking the center, trying to take out Yogg'sdoth's hole on the center of the map, but that just means that their units are even more out of position for when the main drop comes, and Honu... 
having to retreat, realizing this drop is coming, but realizing a bit too late, right in the center of the base, these scallops should be able to rip apart most of this base. I think probably about half the space will go down. The Valkyries have dropped their target. They're actually unscathed, too. The Air Factory's dead. The Commander is going to be a bit of a problem, but not much. That will go down soon enough, and it looks like Honu is basically gone. Yogg's got to pick the right target, I think. I mean, Honu is also the only one who actually attacked them. And right before the Penetrator is done, the Factory goes down once again, so both Factories have gone down. Yogg's to toss, I think, has pretty much taken on Honu at this point. Their Commander, however, is not dead yet. Honu just lost the core of their base, but they aren't gone. They're just damaged. And these Kelpels are going to be an issue. That's just going to be a major issue. So right now, these Scallops can't actually deal with Honu's Commander. They sort of can, but not easily. If they were to rush forward, they have to... They'd be just ripped apart by the scalpels right now. And counterattack coming in here, not able to do much, but without their factory, that's really neutered Honu for about a minute or so. It's gonna take a minute. It's gonna take about a minute for Honu to be able to get back on their feet right now. And those scalpels going into a really dangerous position. Why are they moving forward? The scallops probably will die. Oh, they're both gonna die, but still, that's extremely dangerous. These scalpels need to move back. They were just lucky there weren't very many scallops left. But that was, that was a very nice strike by yogg -Sadoth. I mean, taking that South Island, and are they going to do another strike like that? No, they're going instead for Grizzlies. Although they do have Walking Scallops coming in here to try to pincer it out. Okay, not really pincer it out. I mean, attack from a different angle, not pincer it out. What am I saying? <laughs> it's not going to be a pincer move. There's no way that could be a pincer move. There's nothing to pincer with. That one Scallop is not going to really work as, as rear support. Now, Rav-8 has built up... They continue to build up. They actually have the largest army by cost at the moment. All ducks and scallops, but still very powerful. While Parsifal... They have no economy. They are just now rebuilding their economy. After about... Eight minutes? That's a little bit... Short. Although they are coming in to try to deal with Yogstoth, and it looks like... These defenders are not going to be able to do anything. Yogstoth's going to lose a few units here. Or a few metallic striders, I mean. Lose this pylon as well, so they're going to be... Their economy is going to go down a little bit, but nowhere near as much as would be a problem. I am surprised no urchins were made here. I don't know if Yogg-Sothoth Yog can't possibly have expected that the defenders would have worked, but no urchins is very suspect. It's a really strange choice. But still, they're focusing on Honu, and they should be able to deal some damage, but won't be able to take it out yet. They will need to have some raiders coming in here to deal with these. Like either rapiers or... Oh, Grizzly coming in, because why not? Be yeah, either rapiers or maybe ducks. I think ducks would be a little bit slow in that regard. I don't... I don't know. Ducks might be able to work. I just... It's worth testing. I don't think they... I think they might be even at best. And Yogstuff having... Or sorry. Well, Yogstuff having taken a bit of damage. Parzival taking out that southwest section. Yogg will probably rebuild it ASAP, but still... Not the best situation, and Urchins on the land. Urchins on the land, Defenders in the water. Unfortunately, not the way to go against Amphibs. Hopefully, we'll see that rebuilt into something a bit more effective. While well, Yogstoth, on the other hand... Or sorry, Hono on the other hand, they're, they've rebuilt. They have their Air Factory. They know another drop might be coming. And Parzival coming in here with a Grizzly along the south side. Despite not having much of an economy, they do still have something in terms of a military, but right now that Grizzly is going to become scrap metal very shortly. So are these Scallops, but that Grizzly is a huge loss when it goes down right about... In, oh, whoa, what? The Grizzly saved? Parzival, move that back. Move that back right now. Get that back to your base. Heal that up. That had no right to live, but it has. So, thanks, game. It had. I said retreat. And that's why I said retreat. Retreat and heal. It's got to do with heavy units. Because right now, Ravate's counterattack is going to tear apart Parzival. I think Ravate's counterattack is probably going to destroy Parzival. As Yogg-Sath comes in here to try to finish off the marching order of ducks. I think these ducks actually... Well, we'll see. The ducks might indeed be faster. I'd be surprised if they were, but let's see. Speed. Speed, 84 almost per second. Oh yeah, ducks are actually faster. They're faster by about... Factor of, like, a third. Like, one and a third times the speed of scalpels. So, never mind. Ducks are actually very useful here. And this is probably the end of Honu. Although, it looks like Rav-8 not going for the counterattack. They are not finishing this off, but Yogstoth most certainly is. Yogstoth's going to take this out right away. Oh, I don't really know... I don't know what's going to happen after this match. I mean... 
Someone's gonna win, but like there's only four players. And that was the only people that are here. And four players is basically sort of the last match. So I guess Honu is the first out. Honu is out. So I don't know if we're doing it where in terms of reverse order of leaving. Like, so the next person who dies is third, and then after that, second, and then whoever is still alive at the very end is first. But anyway, Rav8 and Parzival fighting it out, so it looks like Parzival is going to get third place in this case. Or at least they look pretty dangerously close to that. The second Grizzly actually has been damaged, though. That might be a problem. Yeah, Honu's out. At this point, at this point, it's entirely an autopilot. Like, their forces have been given standing orders, but that's about it. That's all they have going for them. Yogtoth might as well finish off the rest of this, like, rest of this army, tear apart this factory. Just make sure that nothing that's on repeat stays on repeat. But yeah, Honu is out. So Ravate is the next obvious target, and Ravate's going for Parzival. Parzival is going to be probably going down. They do not, they have half the economy of Ravate. They have a smaller army, and Ravate had a large army. Yogtoth has a largest army now, but for the longest time, Ravate had the largest army. But Yog has now pulled their economy advantage into a very strong military advantage, and there we go, there's the urchins. Bit surprised it took that long for them to rebuild them, but still, there's the urchins. Parzival's not really been a threat, and I'm sure Yogg'sdoth knows this. I'm a bit surprised they aren't moving forward here, though. Like, get rid of this factory. I don't I don't think Yogg'sdoth knows that there's a factory there. No, they know there's a factory. They, they've seen it. It's, it's on Ghost. They know it exists. I don't know why they haven't started to deal with it yet. Oh, that's why, because the forces to deal with it are, are just incoming now. Wait. Oh no, it's because they're on a fight order. Or, yeah, well, partially because they're on a fight order, because that's pulling them back every single time. But there we go, that should get rid of that. That is the very end of Honu. Now, Rav 8 is obviously the next one, and right now, Rav 8 has. They actually have a pretty good idea what's going on. Oops. Or they should, anyway. They have decent radar, but I don't see any radar dots. That's. What? Okay, that's really bizarre. I should be seeing radar dots. Okay, well, you can see them on the minimap. They're not showing up here for some reason. Yeah, you can see on the minimap there's quite a lot of knowledge here. The so Rav 8 kind of knows what's going on. But they probably also know that Yogstoth is coming in to kill them. Yeah, this is... Wait, this is still Honu's autopilot forces. Wow, Honu's still... Despite leaving, Honu is being a thorn in Yogstoth's side. Slowing Yogstoth's approach down, but at this point, is just a matter of time. Rav8 and Parzival, if they team up, if they form a truce and an alliance briefly, they might be able to hit Yogstoth. Maybe. I'm not sure, but yes, Honu died. You are organizing the tournament, right, Parzival? You might want to keep track of this. Yes, Honu died a while ago. Honu's long since left. Now, Yogg doesn't even seem to care too much about moving forward from here. Just get rid of the... Yeah, why not get rid of the commander? So, we're back into another slow time. Rav8, are they going to attack Parzival? I, I don't know, I mean, it's pretty even right now. Rav8 has the economy, they can sustain an assault. But... There's also the fact that they are going to set up Reclaim, and they don't want to have that. That You never want to have your opponent get Reclaim, if you can avoid it. I mean, scouting is obviously important, but if you can avoid it and it's not something where information would be a big deal, yeah, good idea to avoid giving away that much. What the hell are these doing? Are they, oh, they're just attacking whatever's nearby. Like I said, Honu's entire force on autopilot. Honu's entire force has been... just... It's been fighting despite Honu not being in command for the last five minutes. But I am really surprised that Ravate and Parzival have not decided to team up. I mean, maybe that's why Ravate isn't attacking Parzival, but it doesn't look like it. Like, as far as I know, they haven't... I mean, I don't know if I can see private messages or anything, but I don't think that they've said, Hey, you know, this Yogg'sdoth guy, they're, they're being a bit of a threat. Maybe we should destroy them. They've kind of got two players' worth of economy now. Although, admittedly, they had a super strong economy to begin with, but now they've definitely got two players' worth of economy. The Honu's autopilot forces are probably not enough to deal with this. So, I don't know how this is going to work. Rav8 building that grizzly. 
Getting all that stuff up. I don't know. Parzival is... Parzival's reclaiming, but other than that, I'm not really sure what's... What's Yogstoth's plan from here? Who are they going to attack next? Are they going to go straight down to Rav4? Are they going to go straight down to Parzival? Looks like Parzival's not going to be rushing in here. They aren't going to be attacking North anytime soon. Rav8 is a bit of a threat. Rav8 is a much bigger threat. They have a stronger economy. They've always had a stronger army. I mean, their skirmishes with Parzival are the only things that actually cause this game to not just be completely one-sided. If it weren't for that they had skirmishes with Parzival, they'd actually... It'd be a bit hard for Yogstoth to punch through, but right now, they become fairly weak as a result. Yogstoth can go in for the kill whenever they like. I think they're playing with their opponents right now. Either that, or they don't realize just how far ahead they are, because they have three times... Well, of any individual, they have three times the military. And they have, well, more than any of the militaries of the two combined. I mean, if Parzival and Ravate combine their militaries, they might be able to push back Yogstoth for a little while. They wouldn't win. Probably. They might win, I don't know. I don't really see that happening. Although Singularity Re Singularity Reactor, really? At this point? How much metal do you even have? Three. Well, I guess you have a decent amount. Why is that not showing up? What the heck? That's weird. Apparently a bug with the vision has not quite totally been fixed. Thought I fixed it myself. Anyhow, Yogg stuff. Just playing it slow. Playing it super slow. Why they're playing it so slow is beyond me. They really should just be going for it. Well, 24 rapiers. Probably for Parzival. Take Parzival out and then just finish off Rav 8. Okay, well. Are we going to finish this up? I think we might... Well, no, Honu is still losing their forces. What is Yogg'Sadoth waiting for? Now, like I said, Yogg'Sadoth basically... Actually knows nothing. This is Yogg'Sadoth's knowledge right now. They actually don't know what's going on further south. Honu's dead. Parzival is completely in the dark. And we saw before... Oops. That Honu, while it doesn't show up here for some bizarre reason... It does show up in the minimap that Honu does have a decent idea of what Parzival has set up and what Yogstoth has set up. So, let's see, Rav8. Rav8 should know right now their best bet is to ally with Parzival. They should have realized that just by how big Yogstoth is. They know that Yogstoth did not start in the north, and now they are fully set up in the north. Big deal. Something to be dealt with. But they aren't dealing with it, and... Building a shipyard on top of that, I'm not... What are they planning on doing? Like, a Singularity Reactor with what they have now will probably overdrive it to... Nothing, actually. The Singularity Reactor hasn't been connected to anything. It needs to have pylons to connect it, or other, I guess, tidal generators. Right now, it can't really do anything. All it's gonna do there... Like, it's just gonna be sitting there, waiting to explode. Like, that's just gonna take out a lot if it explodes, too. That's all it's really doing. Sitting there, waiting to die. As Rav8 is not particularly power-hungry at the moment, and Yogstoth as well. I mean, why not have Singularity Reactors? You might as well. But Yogg's got that set up. They know what's up. But they aren't attacking. Now they're 26 Rapiers. Just, you could probably kill somebody here. I think what they're they're afraid of is that if they attack Rav8, Parzival will come in, and then they'll have to deal with Rav8 and Parzival at the same time. And at that point, they'll still win. But it'll be harder. But I don't know. At this point, they're... Yogg's not even building anything. What is Yogg up to? Oh, I see. Okay, getting nukes. Of course. Although I feel like they must have Striders as well. I don't... Let's see, Strider Hub. Strider Hub. No, I don't... I don't see a Strider Hub anywhere around here. That doesn't seem likely. So yeah, just the silencer. That's the only thing going on. Grizzlies continuing to pour out of Parzival and Rav8. Neither of them going for a Strider Hub. This shipyard, I don't really know what to be used for. Shipyards don't really have anything Strider class, so unless they're going for some sort of mass enforcer or something for the missiles, I don't know. What does this thing they're supposed to take anyway? 
No, really, why is the ETA not showing up? That's supposed to show up underwater. How strange. Anyhow, Yogg-Sadoth continuing to wait. They're just waiting around. Alright, what is being built here? Yeah, because all I can think is... Well, Crusaders maybe, Enforcers maybe. That's about the only thing I can think of to be built at this stage of the game. Ravid's actually the only one continuing to build units. What is Parzival building? Getting an Athena up. But they aren't building anything. However, Parzival's also excessing. They need to build stuff. Yogg-Sadoth is building. They're building nukes. A slightly questionable decision, especially since they haven't attacked anything at the moment. But yeah, so we're going to be waiting about three minutes. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to get some tea. So if you don't mind, we'll just wait about three minutes. I'll let you guys see the whole map, because... I mean... Oh, wait! No, never mind, never mind. Hold that tea. I'll get that later. Because we actually do have an attack fighting out right now. And Rav-8 is taking a bit more damage than I expected. No boar... Okay, did I not know that Doomsday Machines require the grid to be linked up? Evidently, they do not. How unfortunate for them. And Yogstoth moving into the center, we might actually see a bit of a final skirmish before that missile gets shot off. So we have three missile silos coming in. Yogstoth's main strategy seems to be the missiles. They have the Rakers coming in as well to deal with this. And Rav-8 continuing to try to make sure Parzival cannot get in. Now finally defending the north, realizing that, oh hey, Yogstoth is being serious. Of course, they have no anti-nukes. No one has anti-nukes right now. Neither of the players seems to have realized, hey, nukes are a thing. Because nukes are a thing. And nukes will be a thing very shortly. I I would imagine that this is going to be a pretty short game after that. So rapiers. They're going for the attack. Oh, Parzival's Athena. Parzival finally sees what's going on. And are they? what are they going to do? Are they going to build up some ducks or something? I mean, Athena's got a lot of options. Actually, duck isn't an option there. Apparently, living is also not an option, as the Athena is getting shot down. But I want to know, like, how is this going to work? Are we seeing this going to come in here, or what? I don't know. I think once this force is gone, then Yogg-Sat's probably going to attack. I mean, at that point, the missile has another minute and a half before it's finished. Oh, oh, hello, Arachnid Soul. This is 0k. If you play Total Annihilation, you're halfway to understanding this game. It's basically a large-scale, well, not as large-scale as Total Annihilation, but yeah, it is a large-scale RTS game focused primarily around macro management, but also about around physics-based mi physics micro. However, in FFA, this is an FFA, so it's a little bit different. Normally, I do 1v1s. So it's a lot easier to explain how the game works there. In FFA, it's just weird because, well, free-for-alls are always weird in games. In this particular case, though, basically, these numbers here are like army value, defense value, and metal energy. Metal energy being your main resources, you need those to build things. And right now, yogg as you can see, has plenty compared to everybody else. They're also building a bunch of nukes. These will basically wipe out... Oh, can I show it? Can I show it? Yes, I can! Okay, so, for those of you not familiar, this is the range of a nuke. It'll basically wipe out everything inside that red circle. And there are about five of them coming in here. That's going to wipe out pretty much the entire south side of the map, giving Yogg-Sadoth the game. Yeah, okay, well, it's kind of like Total Annihilation Spring Commander, but there's a unit counter structure and a general pace that's much more like Command and Conquer. So it's a kind of... Okay, I don't know how Nuclear Dawn plays. Never actually heard of Nuclear Dawn, honestly. I'm surprised. But anyway, yeah, so... If you're not familiar with other RTS games, I'm not sure where to start, other than watch this, and hopefully it becomes clear, and I'll try to explain bits and pieces. But we are in a two-minute delay, because this is a tournament, and I tend to do that, so unfortunately it's going to be a bit hard for me to explain what's going on. Sorry about that. It's just, well... want to make sure that people can't cheat. So Yogg about to lose the commander. This is not a big deal. Not at this stage in the game. Losing the commander would be nothing, although admittedly that doesn't happen, but still... Even with that much, even with 4,000 or 5,000 metal invested in the commander, not a big deal. Parzival coming in for the counterattack, trying to stop Yogg-Sadoth. This is actually not too bad of an idea, especially along this area. These 
No archers, though. No anti-air from the Amphid player here. From Parzval. He's both players playing Amphid. Parzval not building up any archers. No anti-air, so these these rapiers are going to have free reign. Not really much can be done here. Two or three are going to go down, and that'll be it. And the nuke is just about done. 90% done. Oh, Honus thought Yogg was diagonal to them, not adjacent. The benefits of early scouting. Know where your opponents are. And which ones are where. Because that is a huge deal. And finally, Rav8 gets that Singularity Reactor up, but that's just too late. Too little too late. Parzval losing their entire army, and at this point, we just would have the nukes. Yep, we have nuke. We have the nuke. Not sure when that's going to fire off, not sure when Yogg's going to realize they have a nuke. Maybe they'll wait until they have two or three nukes and then hit everybody at once so that no anti-nukes get built in the meantime. And that may in fact be the case. It would certainly work. There are no anti-nukes being built. At all. Yeah, late game is, for those of you not familiar, nukes, anti-nukes, Strider class unit, like Strider class super heavy units. Grizzlies kind of count as, well, they're not quite Strider class, like half Strider class. That's basically what dominates at this stage in the game, and FFA is typically much more defensive than something like 1v1, or even team games. Which, if this is the only game in the FFA tournament, I will be going back to that Clan Wars match, to cast the other Clan Wars matches just to finish that up. It'll be weird on YouTube. I think on YouTube I'll end up just putting the Clan Wars stuff on its own and putting this on its own. I'm not sure what about Clan Wars, though. Maybe you have its own playlist for that. Hmm. I'll have to think about it. I already have a ton of playlists on my channel. But yeah, if this is the only tournament in the FFA, or only tournament match for the FFA tournament, then yeah, we're going to have Clan Wars after this. If not, then I guess we'll continue, but I don't know what's going to happen, because at this point, this is only four people. Oh, okay, so Nuclear Dawn's kind of like Savage. Alright, apparently it's an RTS-FBS hybrid. I didn't realize that was actually still much of a thing. I mean, Savage basically crashed and burned. I didn't expect people would actually continue with that concept. I mean, at this point, S2 Games is pretty much dead. I mean, they did Savage, then they did Savage 2, and then Heroes of New Earth, and that was... I haven't heard anything from, since Heroes of New Earth. At any rate, how many rapiers are left? 18 rapiers left! Hmm. Anyway... Well, there are five nukes ready. Are you going to be going off with this? Yes, they are! All on Parzival, apparently. Wait, have they fired? There we go, there's the shot. And this will end Parzival, so Parzival's gonna get third place. And that's the thing, unless this is different, but I don't see how it could be, because that, that would basically mean we should exit now and start another game. Parzival is third place, and no, not three minutes, more like ten seconds? So let's watch the shinies, because everything else is kind of irrelevant compared to that. Shinies! Wee, the stuff of nightmares! No, seriously, I have nightmares about nuclear war all the time. Or at least I did. Not so much anymore, but... Parzival will. Definitely. After this. Although the Razors won't... Actually, the Razors will. They're alive to have nightmares. Everything else is dead. The Razors are the only survivors. Parzival surrenders after having their entire base wiped out by... Five mushroom clouds. And of course, Rave knows. They must know. That there's another one coming. I don't wonder if it'll be five or if it'll just be one. Or like three. Because, I mean, that was overkill on Parzival. We see, like, Parzival's island is nothing now. That, yeah, and the Razor's just getting finished off. Defiant to the end, those Razors. The only survivors of Nuclear Ground Zero. Quintuple get Nuclear Ground Zero. Where's that anti-nuke? There's the anti-nuke. Anti-nukes have actually been buffed recently. They can. They used to not be able to hit nukes in transit, apparently, and now they can. Whether that will be relevant is highly unlikely, because at this point, five nukes coming in, and it's going to be like a minute before that comes up, and this anti-nuke is going to take like three. No, never mind. Fifteen. Fifteen. That's <laughs> holy crap. Yeah, sorry, Rav8. Am I going to put that in high priority? You know, hit this button here. Put that in high priority so that you can actually get it done before one or two s salvos. Not nukes, just salvos of five nukes come at you. Because Rav-8's basically dead. And that anti-nuke is not going to be up in time. 
If they built two, they might even have a chance, but it's not going to be up in time no matter what. So that... Oh yeah, Natural Selection, that's another one. Yeah, and Tremulous is another one that's kind of like that too. Although Tremulous and Natural Selection are basically the same game. There's a few differences between them, but... I don't know, Tremulous, I've played, Natural Selection I haven't, but it looked like, Natural Selection looked like a really polished version of the same base game. Although, yeah, I'm reading chat and responding to it, I'm two minutes behind them! Or rather, we're two minutes apart, like, I say something, and then they hear it two minutes later, whatever. <laughs> Tournament delays, I really wish I could just delay the game itself, like, just delay, so... The stream is watching what I'm saying immediately, but the game is two minutes behind what the players are seeing. That would be great. I don't know if there's a way to engineer that by messing around with in-game delays or what. Like, not making the catch-up thing work. But yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like that. At any rate, that's not a thing. Or if it is a thing, it's currently not enabled in this lobby. And double checking, now they know where the anti-nuke is. They know the anti-nuke is actually a minute and a half away from being done. Which is unfortunate because the nukes are... About two seconds away from being fired. So, where are the targets right now? Oh, we don't see them anymore, but... Yeah, goodbye, RAV4. Congratulations on your silver medal. Although, I think one anti isn't going to be enough. I think it would have to be two or three antis for the be a problem. This is... Death. Shiny again! And down goes Rav 8. Well, wow, Alliance Zero was destroyed. That actually wiped out. No, it didn't quite wipe out all of Rav 8 stuff here. But yeah. Another nuke. It's like a forest of trees. A fiery trees of death. That's what it looks like to me. And there's a the forest canopy full of smoke and fire and death and radiation. So, moral of the story is, scout in F scout and talk. In FFA, scout and talk. Big freaking deal. Because if you don't scout, you don't know what's happening. If you don't talk, then you're going to die pretty quick. Right, well, that was, I guess that, I don't know. I mean, I have no idea what's happening anymore. I guess that's the tournament? I really don't know what the format was. I don't think Parzival knew what the format was. So... I just... Yeah, that was just weird. I think I'm gonna go back to the Clan Wars stuff. I mean... I think that's actually it. There was like four people and that was the only FFA match being played as far as I know. Like, there wasn't a bunch of rooms with a bunch of different people in groups. I think that was it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will have the Clan War stuff up again in just a moment. Get the second match, and possibly third if nothing happens with this tournament. What? Okay, apparently that was a warm-up match? Why does no one tell me these things? If I had known that, I wouldn't have wasted time. Like, I don't have the time to spend for however long this is supposed to go. I don't know what's happening. And frankly, I don't see the point of trying to deal with this. This is getting annoying. Like, no one showed up, and now I'm being told that was a warm-up game and not a real game. Just no. Just, just no. That, as far as I can tell, was the tournament. I mean, it was a silly tournament, so not the biggest deal. But anyway, back to Clan Wars, which is a bit less silly. So let's get back to that, and... Excuse me, I'm going to take a little quick second to redo all the scores because I need to actually get that all set up.
Uh, go to planes.